We preview free agency for the New York Football Giants. Today, Sean O'Hara and I will take a look at wide receivers and tight ends, the playmakers. First at wide receiver, Sean, we know the Giants are going to return Sterling Shepard and Darius Slayton as two of their, and I'm going to say three starters because, frankly, three wide receivers are on the field more than half the time now. What should they be looking for to complement those two players? Yeah, Darius Slayton, obviously, you think of speed when you think about him on the outside running by people. And then you think of Sterling Shepard, kind of more of the slot. So I, I kind of look at the, the Giants, a good fit would be, give me a, a big, tall, physical receiver. Give me somebody that can play outside. Sure, you could move him inside if you want to and have that versatility, have that ability. But I, I think when you look at Daniel Jones and what he does best, he throws a great red zone ball up high. Let Guys like Evan Ingram, go get it. Give me a wide receiver that can climb the ladder and that has a little bit of size to him. All right, Sean, there's three guys here in free agency we didn't put on the board because we feel that it's just going to be really tough to acquire them, whether they hit the market, really expensive, Allen Robinson, Chris Godwin, and Kenny Galladay. But these are the guys we think maybe they're a little bit more possible. Will Fuller, speed guy, some injury history. Of course, we all know Juju Smith-Schuster's production in Pittsburgh. And then Corey Davis, a former first-round pick who really had his best year heading into free agency. Yeah, Corey Davis is an interesting one. And for him, he was kind of banged up, so he battled the injury bug. And that's why the numbers and the production probably doesn't look as good uh, when compared to the first-round talent that you, you talked about with him getting drafted. I think Juju is a very interesting case and, and because it's where are you going to put him. You know, he was in the slot back when he was with Antonio Brown, and then when he moved outside, he kind of looked like a different receiver. Um, last year, obviously, he led the team in, in, in catches, but, you know, it'll be interesting to see how the Steelers value him and what his market looks like. Uh, Will Fuller, obviously, big playability. And, I mean, just look at the difference in all right, their yards. All three of these receivers, John, are very similar, but his receptions, I mean, look at that. It's, it's remarkable. It's 44 catches less if my math is correct, than Juju, and yet more yards. So that, that's a big playability. Um, obviously, he, he missed six games last year uh, because of uh, get, getting snagged for the PEDs. So for Will Fuller, I, I think he could be a very explosive as well as a very physical target. So these are potential one or two wide receivers. Here are guys that can play a more of a support role to the Darius Slaytons, to the Sterling Shepherds, And they have the ability to go out there, be that quote-unquote, X-speed outside wide receiver that you would want to complement Shepard and Slayton. Yeah, no doubt they're going to be, you know, one of those teammates that does all the dirty work and moves all around. Also, it could create a lot of great value. You know, if, if those other receivers command the market initially and now all of a sudden you can get a great steal. I, I look at all these guys. Rashard Higgins, obviously, he's bounced around a little bit. Perryman has done a great job. Sammy Watkins, I mean, you look at the, the track team that he was on with the Chiefs, so no doubt – his numbers are down because of the other guys. Marvin Jones, to me, John, is very intriguing. And when you look at Marvin Jones, he was their leading receiver in Detroit last year. Kenny Galladay was banged up, missed some time. But over the last two years, 18 touchdowns. That's a lot of production for somebody who maybe people don't think of as a number one wide receiver. And the other thing with Marvin Jones, not only is he a great singer, he's got a great voice, but he's willing to do all the dirty work. He's willing to come in and block and dig out the safety. He's not a guy you're going to have to worry about, um, you know, on and off day getting in trouble. I think Marvin Jones is a quality guy both on and off the field that I think the Giants should be very aggressive in. And Joe Judge at his press conference always points out it's a small fraction of the plays where wide receivers catch the ball, but they have to block on nearly every play. So that's very astute. something that is something that he definitely keeps an eye on, Sean. Now, let's go to the tight end position. Speaking of blocking. No question about it. Well, the Giants... All three of their tight ends from last season played nearly all 16 games. They're all under contract. These are the guys that are hitting free agency that maybe could help supplement that group. Some guys that were high draft picks that have a different various skill set. When you look at the Giants offense from 2020, Jason Garrett, he loves the two and three tight end formations. And I, I think for him, you can't have enough good blocking tight ends and you can find ways to scheme them open in the passing game. So when you look at this group right here, obviously Kyle Rudolph jumping onto this map uh, due to the release from the Vikings, he's obviously brings both of those abilities to the table. Um, Dan Arnold ha had a pretty good season last year. I look at Gerald Everett, and I, I look at him in a two tight end formation with Evan Ingram and what that can do to the defenses. Now all of a sudden you're really stressing the linebackers and the safeties. Um, he would be a, very, a really nice addition to that. And then I, I think you, you, you put them in next to Caden Smith, who I think was one of the unsung heroes of the offense last year. 
and now you've got all kinds of versatility. So, uh, you know, this uh, Anthony Ferksner showed some athletic ability. Uh, he's almost kind of like the Frank Wycheck throwback, right? He can play tight end and fullback and move around. Uh, a lot like what Caden Smith brings to the table. Yeah, Evan Ingram, Caden Smith, Levine Toilolo did a really nice job complementing each other in the Giants' offensive attack last year. That's a look at wide receivers and tight ends in free agency. We'll see you next time, everybody.